The film opens with Detective Alex Cross and his team, consisting of Tommy and Monica, in relentless pursuit of a dangerous fugitive. They relentlessly track him down, displaying the determination akin to a hungry wolf pack. Despite the fugitive's attempts to escape, Alex seizes the opportunity and captures him. Alex is not merely a detective. He also holds the role of a psychiatrist, harboring a profound interest in medicine. During one evening, he pays a visit to a female prisoner named Pop Pop. Driven by a sense of duty to guide her away from her violent history, he periodically engages in conversations and chess games with her. Alex resides in a vibrant household with his wife Maria, their daughter their son, and Maria's mother. In contrast to the conventional portrayal of detectives, Alex is intricately involved with his family, assuming the roles of a caring father and devoted husband. Following a piano lesson for his daughter, he proceeds to instruct his son in operating a drone. In the midst of this familial interaction, Maria interjects with a momentous revelation. She's expecting a child. Alex, brimming with joy, is practically floating on air. Meanwhile, a deadly assassin arrives near an aged structure and confirms a completed payment through a phone call. His target is located within the dilapidated building, currently serving as the venue for illicit cage fights. Identifying his mark as Fan Yeo, the assassin decides to make an impression by participating in the fight. Although the fight organizer doubts his chances, the assassin persuades him, adopting the moniker Assassin of Sligo. He dominates the bout, inflicting severe injuries on his opponent and capturing Fan Yeo's attention. Intrigued, she invites him on a date. However, during an intimate moment, he poisons her with a neurotoxic substance, TTX, rendering her paralyzed. Subsequently, he retrieves a concealed gun from his shoe, attaches a silencer, and prepares to fulfill his mission. Switching back to Alex, who receives an early morning call from the police chief, he promptly arrives at the crime scene. Contacting Tommy, he interrupts urgent work Tommy is handling with Monica to convey the news of Fanyo's murder. Upon catching up with Tommy, Alex takes the opportunity to deliver a lecture on the perils of dating a co-worker and the importance of maintaining emotional control. Surveying the crime scene, it becomes evident that the assassin has successfully eliminated all of Yo's personal security. In Yo's room, a gruesome discovery reveals that the assassin cruelly severed her fingers. Alex later identifies the unique drawing method employed by the assassin, reminiscent of Picasso's charcoal sketches. Back at the station, Alex pieces together that a businessman named Eric is the next target. When Alex, Tommy, and Monica attempt to warn Eric, his security team, comprised of former cops, dismisses their concerns expressing confidence in their ability to protect him. However, as security system breaches become apparent, they eventually place their trust in the detectives and accompany them to Eric's office for questioning. Meanwhile, the assassin skillfully navigates a water pipe to approach and eliminate Eric. Meanwhile, Alex and the team rush to Eric's office, urgently alerting him to the imminent danger. While conducting a thorough search of the premises, Tommy remains by Eric's side. The assassin effortlessly overpowers the guards, but Alex intervenes, catching him off guard and commanding him to drop his weapon. The assassin behaves oddly, hesitating and reluctant to surrender the gun as Alex issues orders. Seizing a moment of opportunity, the assassin continues his plan, throwing a grenade and making a swift escape. In response to the explosion, Tommy reacts swiftly, shooting at the fleeing assassin, causing injury but failing to capture him. Back at the station, Alex discovers that Yo and Eric were colleagues in a company led by someone named Mercier, who might be the next target. The following day, Alex, Tommy, and Monica visit Mercier. They are greeted by a secretary exhibiting peculiar behavior indicative of possible drug use. When Alex extends a handshake to Mercier, he accidentally cuts his hand on Mercier's sizable ring. Apologizing for the incident, Alex learns that Mercier received the ring from the King of Cambodia and listens as Mercier boasts about it. They move to a private room to address the assassin threat. Alex discloses to Mercier that he is the target. Mercier, trusting Alex and unable to identify anyone who would wish him harm, is urged to exercise extreme caution. After their discussion, Alex departs, leaving Mercier to contemplate the gravity of the situation. Later in a shocking twist, it is revealed that Monica is not alone in her apartment. The assassin is present. Meanwhile, Alex and Maria enjoy dinner at a restaurant during which he shares news of a job offer from the FBI in Washington, D.C., featuring a substantial pay increase. However, when Alex attempts to contact Monica, he is met with the voice of the assassin. The assassin provides Alex with a photograph of a deceased Monica, vividly describing her agonizing demise. Positioned in a building opposite the restaurant, 
the assassin aims his sniper rifle at Alex, demanding a psychological profile. Alex characterizes him as a psychopathic, narcissist likely starting with the killing of animals, provoking the assassin's rage. In a tragic turn, the assassin retaliates by killing Maria. After a devastating funeral, Alex and Tommy, both mourning their losses, vow to find the assassin and avenge their loved ones. The assassin calls Alex, blaming him for Maria's death. Alex vows to pursue him relentlessly. During the night, commencing their quest for vengeance, Alex is resolute in halting the killer despite his mother's earnest pleas for his safety. Collaboratively, Alex and Tommy unlawfully enter the police station with the objective of retrieving the firearm employed by Pop Pop in her criminal act. The subsequent day, Alex proposes the return of the gun and Pop Pop's liberation to her father, proposing a bargain for information regarding the local TTX supplier. Succumbing to the proposal, the father acquiesces, and together they confront the dealer, who, following a forceful interrogation, confesses ignorance about any leads to the assassin. After scrutinizing security footage and identifying the assassin's car license plate, they hastily embark on a pursuit. Meanwhile, the police establish cordons to secure the area for a meeting between Mercer and Eric, anticipating a potential strike by the assassin. Simultaneously, the assassin parks in a garage and proceeds to a train station via taxi, subsequently commandeering a train. Aboard the train, three passengers confront him. Two are fatally injured, and the third sustains wounds. Alex and Tommy alert the police of the proximity of the assassin, emphasizing the imminent threat. As Mercer and Eric make their entrance, the distant sound of a train captures Alex's attention, prompting him to intervene in an attempt to shield Mercer. Unfortunately, he arrives too late, as the assassin launches an RPG, resulting in the tragic demise of both Eric and Mercer. Upon eliminating the final witness aboard the train, the assassin exits with an air of nonchalance, driving away under the assumption that his mission is successfully concluded. However, Alex abruptly crashes into the assassin's car, resulting in injuries to Tommy but leaving him alive. Exiting his vehicle, Alex embarks on foot to pursue the assassin and cautiously enters an attic. There, the assassin seizes the advantage, disarming Alex in an unexpected confrontation. A fierce battle ensues, with both adversaries exchanging blows evenly, until the assassin gains the upper hand, preparing to administer TTX on Alex. Surprisingly, Alex retaliates by stabbing the assassin with a knife, just as the floor beneath them gives way. Alex manages to overcome the assassin with a decisive kick. Weakened and on the verge of falling himself, Alex is rescued when Tommy and other officers arrive to provide assistance. Later, expressing relief that their harrowing experience is seemingly over, Tommy receives a different perspective from Alex, who hints that it's not truly concluded. In a surprising turn in Bali, it is revealed that Mercer is alive. Alex contacts Mercer, disclosing his awareness that Mercer orchestrated the entire plot, including the attempts on his own life. Alex's suspicion arose when he noticed the supposedly deceased Mercer lacked his distinctive golden ring. After delving into the details, Alex unravels the truth. Mercer engaged in embezzlement from his clients, orchestrating a plan with Yao and Eric to feign his demise and seek refuge in Bali. He manipulated the assassin to eliminate them, ensuring the safety of his illicit secret. Alex confronts Mercer, explicitly holding him accountable for Maria's death and revealing that he's tipped off local law enforcement about Mercer's aide's involvement in narcotics. Furthermore, Alex has orchestrated the placement of two kilos of drugs on Mercer's property. As the local authorities arrive, Alex coldly predicts that Mercer's future likely involves a firing squad once they depart. Later, we find Alex and Tommy on the road. Alex has joined the FBI, and Tommy is pursuing a role at the FBI, expressing their intent to continue their partnership. Returning home, Alex prepares to pack up, move forward, and embark on a new chapter with his family. The End So, what do you think of this movie? Did you enjoy the recap? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. One like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video to your friends and family too. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.